In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the unit step function and also take a look at how to graph an output response to a transient circuit like this one here. Uh, so let's begin by taking a look at the unit step function and getting a, a good idea of how to design a more complicated unit step function. So I, I drew a random unit step function right here and what I want to what I want to get across is the concept that we can look at a unit step function as the superposition of several unit step functions. So what I did was took a single unit step function that has multiple steps in it and I broke it down into three different parts. Okay, And let's define the unit step first. The unit step is u of t such that the output is 1 if t is greater than 0 and it's 0 if t is less than 0. Okay, So for each of these events we'll need to uh, potentially describe what happens at the beginning and what happens at the end. So this is describing a unit step function that's off for minus infinity. It goes to 1 for 1 second and then it's off for the rest of time. So that unit step function will be defined as u of t minus u of t minus 1. and we can try out a, a point inside and a point outside and see what happens. Let's look at the point uh, t equals one half. So when t equals one half we get u of one half. That's greater than zero and so we get one here. Now we get t uh, equaling one half and we get one half minus one well that's minus one half and so that is less than zero and so it equals zero so we get one minus zero and that equals one so our output here is one and in fact if you look at all points between zero and one you'll see that it is always going to output a one if I go on either side of the boundary condition you know either side uh, between zero and one I'll find that I get a zero. Let's try that out. We'll try two. U of t when t is two is uh, greater than zero and so we get one. U of t when t is two we get two minus one which is greater than zero and so we get one minus one which equals zero. Okay, So you can convince yourself that if we put a negative value in here we will also get a zero. Now we've got um, something a little bit different. We're not one, we're, we're up at two, and we're not starting at zero, we start at one and we end at three. This one is going to be something that looks like this. U of t minus one minus u of t minus 3. And all of that needs to be multiplied by a magnitude of 2. Okay, So um, to keep the video rolling here I'm not going to go through and plug numbers in but you can see how once I have this basic formula it's kind of easy to make these. Okay, You have your starting point if it's 1 then it's going to be t minus 1 if it were negative it would be t plus something okay and um, finally how would we do this one okay you might be able to figure it out we're gonna multiply by a magnitude of minus one u of t minus three minus u of t minus four okay so finally we can take all three of these number these equations and add them together and that will describe this 
function right here. And I put together an example to show you. It's slightly different, but you get the point here. So I created three individual unit step functions. G is describing the point from 0 to 1. It's right here. H describes the point from 1 to 2. That would be this area. And then I also did something in the negative region here. Um, and it's only a half a unit down, and it goes from minus 1 to 0. Okay, And then to show that the superposition idea works, I created a brand new function that equals all three of these functions added together. j equals g plus h plus i. And that's what you're seeing the plot of, is the function j, which is the superposition. Okay, So now let's apply this concept to an actual problem. And I'm going to zip through the first order components in here if you want a little bit more information about solving uh, first order circuits then watch the video that I've created on that. So we have quantum event 1 that occurs at um, t equals 0. So this graph right here is showing us the input voltage of the source. So this thing was created infinitely in the past and it it's initially left at zero for all of time and then for one second it goes up to 12 volts and then shuts off and we want to know what is the voltage on the capacitor for all time greater than zero so here's going to be our approach first we'll look at the first event when the switch when the power is turned on to the voltage source we use our standard function for first order circuit, which says that we just do this, V at infinity plus V0 minus V at infinity e to the minus T minus T naught over tau. We answer these four questions, V naught, V infinity, T naught, and tau. We'll start with tau. To do tau, remember we look for our thevenin. Our thevenin in this case will treat the voltage source like a short. The 3k and the 6k are in parallel and they get combined into a 2k resistor. 2k plus 2k is 4k and 4k times 200 microfarads will give you a time constant of 0 0.8 seconds. T0 is defined by the quantum event that we're looking at and it's it occurs at 0 seconds. V at infinity. Well, what we do is we treat the quantum event as if it occurs and nothing else happens afterwards the voltage stays at 12 volts for all time what will happen to the voltage source the voltage on the capacitor this ends up um, acting like an open because the capacitor gets charged and uh, there's no current flowing through the resistor here then and so the voltage on the capacitor will look exactly like the same uh, exactly the same as the voltage on this 6k ohm resistor so you can use voltage division and you'll find that this is 8 volts what is the voltage at 0 well this thing has been connected to a 0 volt to 0 volts for all time so no um, voltage is built up on the capacitor so it's zero volts we can now use this information to write our equation V of T equals um, 8 minus 8 e to the minus 1.25 T and uh, 
I got minus 1.25 by dividing um, by taking the reciprocal of tau. Okay. Now let's look at quantum event number two. And that happens at t equals one. We have the same set of questions to answer. What's v naught? What's v at infinity? What's t naught? And what's tau? We already know tau. 0 0.8 seconds, nothing's changed there. T0 equals 1. V at infinity. So the voltage gets switched off, and we want to know what happens to the voltage on the capacitor. Well, eventually it equals 0, right? How do we solve for V0? What happens at this quantum event T equals 1? Well, we know what happens because we just wrote an equation for it. So it actually equals uh, 8 minus 8e to the minus 1.25t, where t equals 1. So if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get 5.71 volts. Okay? So now we're ready to write the equation for. Uh, ooh, I didn't say this. This is for. Um, let's be uh, a little bit more cautious with this. This is in volts, and this is for t between 0 and 1. Okay, And now we have another equation for t that says that it's 5.71 minus 1.25 times t minus 1. Remember that our equation looks like this. So in the other video, when I said that t naught is usually 0, I also said that the one case where you would see t, uh, t naught equaling a number other than 0 is probably when you're doing a unit step function like this one. Okay. So finally, we want to express this as a function uh, for all time greater than 0. And that's going to look like this. It's going to be the superposition of two unit step functions. So v of t equals 8 minus 8e to the minus 1.25t. All of that is going to be over the unit stem function u of t minus u of t minus 1. And we're going to add to that 5.71 times e to the minus 1.25 times t minus 1 times u of t minus 1. And that's it, right? Because nothing else happens after that. It just decays at all points greater than 1. It just decays. So we don't need, um, we don't need to say when this stops occurring. And that's in volts. And that's for t greater than 0. So now the next challenge we have is to draw this function. Draw what that looks like. Okay, And there are a couple of tricks that we can employ to do that. So let's start by drawing a scale, a graph here. This is going to be t in seconds. And this is going to be v of c as a function of time measured in volts and we need some scales well I'm gonna do seconds and seconds are reasonable right because look at the time constant the time constant is zero and also it's reasonable because I want to somehow relate this to the input signal so we'll say one two 
3. Now what do I want to do for a scale here? Well, we'll look at our equation and see what, what our voltages are at the output. Well, here, if we were to look at this thing at infinity, it ends up being 8 volts. It never actually gets to 8 volts, right? Because we flip the switch down. But 8 volts would be a good number to put on here. So let's say that this is 8. And um, now we want to be able to draw this curve in some sort of reasonable way. There are a couple of ways we can do it. Uh, one way is to draw a tangent line for the beginning of the curve that starts at the beginning of the event and ends at the time constant. Time constant's 8 seconds, so it's right here somewhere. Okay, so I could do this and draw a line from here to there. And that would give me a good idea of where the tangent, uh, where the, what the exponential curve starts out looking like. And then we know that eventually at some point out at infinity it would end up equaling 8. Another way to do it is to divide the terminal condition into thirds and go up two thirds of the way. Okay, and that is the point your um, exponential curve should pass through the time constant and th about two thirds of the way towards where it's going. So now I can draw uh, that curve something like this. Okay, and that that works all the way up to one second. So I'll draw that in a solid line up to one second. Now I want to describe the decay. Well, uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm jumping uh, too far ahead here. How do we know that that's exponentially increasing? Well, a couple of ways. I know it starts at zero and it ends at eight. So it's got to be increasing. And I know it's exponential. So that's one clue. But you can also look at your function. right? This number is getting smaller and smaller right here. And so less and less gets subtracted towards 8. So we just keep approaching 8. Here, we have a number that's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And so it's, getting, it's approaching 0. OK, so we know we are going to get an oops an exponential decay. There's an E there. Um, and I can do the same little trick. It's uh, the same time constant. Okay, and we're starting from here. This is where the quantum event occurs. So I can get a little tangent line. I could take this point and divide it into thirds. And I know I should end up at about this point. Okay, and then I can draw a maybe a different colored line here. Actually, I don't need to draw a different colored line, right? This just goes off to infinity. And so our full function will look something like that. Okay. To help clarify this, I went ahead and plotted this in Mathematica as well. So you can take a look at it and convince yourself that the superposition of the two functions works. So here it is. I took the unit step function and and put them all together and that's what I've plotted in blue here. And then I plotted a couple of other things to help clarify um, uh, the circuit or the uh, output. So this is your unit step input. This is what the decay would look like if you just turn the switch on and left it on. Okay. Uh, so I hope that's helpful and good luck.